really happy to hear that and especially the way it happened through the internet is perfect about um, and it leads me into wanting to talk with you more about how the traditional gatekeepers um, in the traditional like publishing and um, the traditional methods of, uh, of putting out visual art and writing and, and that kind of thing like all of that stuff is breaking down and how it impacts artists and how now is a perfect time to kind of step up and be entrepreneurial and, and start creating a, a voice on the internet. Yeah, I'm glad it's breaking down. It needs to. Um, just uh, it's something funny. A week ago, um, Tri Art Factory had a tour group come in, an art artist, a local artist group, and the owner said something that um, really hit me. He said, "You know, because he's an innovator, and he often comes up with really wild." ideas that are revolutionary and they get um, some bad feedback at the beginning, right? People are like, no, I don't want to see that because it's changed. And he said that to this group of artists, he said, you know, my whole life I've been trying to change things and doing better and, and building on what is and making it better. But the industry that I'm in, the art industry, is so steeped in tradition. They don't want to see change. He said, but it's an absolute bloody contradiction because artists are supposed to be creators and innovators. So what is going on? And it just, I'm like standing off to the sideline laughing. Is it so true? Um, I'm more of a mixed media, like modern artist, but there's a lot of traditional artists. And you can, I think there's a huge, um, uh, it's, it's a misconception or something about you can have, your artwork can be whatever your art is, very traditional in its technique. You certainly don't have to think that way. Right. You certainly don't have to go about your business that way. Well, it's true. It makes me think about the difference, though, between um, like an artist that's there to record beauty and to share beauty. Do you know what I mean? And the artistry that goes inside to push boundaries do you know what i mean like the frankie james mm -hmm. is that her how do you spell you pronounce her name frankie james i don't know i think so okay i i'm guessing just as you okay because i mean that that is so indicative of what you're just saying now and the fact that um artists are are the the early warning systems they are the yeah the, the shamans, like Joseph Campbell says, they're the ones that go in and they bring the new ideas, the new fire out for society. And it's, it's the traditional art um, establishment, not the artists. I think the traditional institutions are what are, are, are not moving forward. Yeah, definitely. They're not. Um, yeah, that's why I, I'm, I'm grateful for the friends that I had that helped me start my business coming up with a totally different idea. Um, and it really was uh, building on other ideas, the ideas that existed, but then customizing them for yourself. And, you know, even just with my, I guess my own artwork, like I don't push to sell my artwork. I, my goal is to share it. So maybe it's the intent that changes things because I I am not out to make money with my artwork. I certainly do. That is not my goal. My goal has always been to fulfill my own spirit and just play and enjoy. Um, some pieces drive me absolutely crazy to achieve that, but in the end, I just share. And the easiest way to share these days with technology is Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. You know, and and actually linking all of those together so that you're reaching, you know, the maximum. And through that, friends, family, people that are connected through other people, uh, I do find the world really small and it's a whole six degrees of separation. Um, but it's it's effective. Yeah. I when I sell work, I'm happy, and when I don't, I put it on my wall and I'm happy with it in my own space. Um, and I I do know a lot of professional artists who. See, you know, 
pay the rent with their art, it's a damn stressful position to be in. So I'd like to see that change. I really would. I think um, I'd like to see painters, illustrators, and you know, every kind of style and application. I'd like to see that they were received in a different way than those traditional roots because they just, um, they're very stressful and there's a lot of pressure on artists and that should, it should flip. I'm sorry, but the business side of things should be taking a lot of the pressure and the artist should be allowed to create. Yeah. But there's a funnel, right? Like there's a, there's gatekeepers at the funnel of the traditional medium. And that's why like the internet is so important because you have a global audience. You do, you have a literally global yeah. audience, but it's a slow process. Like I talk to so many artists who are like, oh, well I've been on the internet for, you know, two years now and nothing's really yes. happened. And I'm like, uh, give it a bit, <laughs> you know, give it a little time. You, you need more than two years. Like how about six? <laughs> You know, how about six years? Of, yeah, there's of, the patience. Well, yeah, it's the patience and the commitment. And and the intent to put out there is to share and to bring value to other people's lives. It's not about yeah. you and about I'm going to show you what I do by my stuff. Like, that's a horrible, twisted, selfish way to get on the Internet. <laughs> Like it is, but it happens. It's all around, you know? It's all about me, me, me. Let me broadcast my shit. But bring value to yeah, other people. Yeah, I'm not fond of those websites. And that's why I'm not fond of those websites that are, um, like, if you sign up for sites that kind of offer you a portfolio to show your work and they sell your work for you. Because, again, it's just, I mean, the Internet's huge. Um, I mean, there's a, maybe a couple of sites that it actually works with, but they are so open to everybody that, you know, 30,000 artists could be on that site. How, what, really, are you going to pay your rent? You're not, how can you guarantee that you're going to sell that much? And then you sign up and you pay this monthly fee and nothing happens, and that's a, more of a disappointment, I think. Um, there's a couple of sites that are good, so I'm not dissing them all or anything like I you know uh, empty um, empty easel .com, mm -hmm. they do a really good newsletter and they have um, I can't remember what it is but they host a site and that's pretty good Robert Jen is pretty good um, but I think all in all um, that was just my own experience mm -hmm. that's a phenomenon with the internet that doesn't necessarily work um, so well, I just don't. I think there needs to be a different approach. And actually, you did a post the other day about family and friends and letting them love you. Yeah. And I loved that post because it is a good way to start, and it should not be counted as something that's valueless just because they know you and want to support you. No, hell no. It is the beginning. Yeah. And that was my beginning as well and I so I you know sharing on Facebook with your friends and family is a damn good start yeah and you can't stick and it costs nothing right and you can't skip over it like I said it's it's a necessary part of your growth <laughs> embrace them let them do that give them your business card so they can go out because they want to help you they love you they love yes. what you do they want to share it with all the people that they know let them let them do that with your yeah. blessing um, I forgot what I was going to say. Well, I was going to say about those websites that you're talking about, uh, they, yeah. it, it can't be your only way. Like you're not, yeah. you're not, those websites aren't bringing people to you. That's not the way it works. Like you as an artist are what's going to create your audience. You're creating your own audience that may give you like the venue for people to buy your work. Do you know what I mean? But you're not going to yeah. build an audience through that. That's not who's coming to look at your stuff. It's from what you're doing online. Do you know what I mean? And that's something that yeah. I'm trying to get through to artists is unfortunately in this day and age, you are your brand. As an artist, you have to be on the internet as a personality. Like it's, it's, it's yeah. you out there with your art. That's what people are coming to. That's what's going to build your audience and your following. That's, that's the way it is. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah and you have to talk um you have you have to, like i said you know when i uh, when i realized how i got through some tough times was was by sh um sharing that with people and you know i'm just like most people, I have my private moments and I don't want to be negative or talk about things that are bothering me. On the same topic, when things are good and things are going really well and you just did a piece and you're really proud of it, shout it out. And, you know, like, I don't, um, I'm not as good with making little comments and, and using words. And so Tumblr's, and, and finding your own social media tools that work for you is really important because Twitter is not my thing. Yeah, and Tumblr Twitter is 40 not characters mine. does not work for me. Yeah, see? Like Tumblr <laughs> oh, see, is, Tumblr's so much. See, not, I, I deleted, <laughs> I deleted my Tumblr account because I, I, I don't like Tumblr. It's not for me, not for me. Twitter, Twitter I love. Every two months, every two months I go to think I want to delete my Twitter account, but I leave it up. And I connect my Tumblr to it so that when I post, and I just post an image, and, you know, my thing is I post the media because I'm, you know, a material geek, and um, and then it links to Twitter, so it's, like, automatic. See, but that's perfect. And that's, I... Sorry, yeah. that's perfect because you're using the So tools. I keep it all running. It's, yeah. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. And there's a lot of things that I can't get into. It's sometimes a bit overload, but you know, you you know, like you said, you can't just focus on one. You have to have a bunch of them. Yeah, it's actually, true. I don't think an art, art an art life is created just with one single thing. If if you're interested in just kind of sitting and doing your your art, um, whatever that is, and not doing anything else. I just don't know how much can come from that. You know, the dedication is really important, but also, um, I'm not going to say it, like spreading it out. Like, um, you know, as a painter or a drawer, I do my own work. I do commissions. You know, I work in the art industry. Um, I try and have my whole, everything that I am connected with, not just social media, but all of those things. I try to have multiple things and they're all connected. Um, and it and in that that works, but if I was just to focus on one thing, you know that saying: if you chase two um, two rabbits, you lose one. Okay, yeah. It's something like that. Like you, you're, you know, someone said to me years ago: you're so distracted and you're not focused on any one thing, you're not going to excel at anything. Then you have to just like just focus on shared palette or just focus on teaching, whatever, right? And I thought a lot about it, and I was like, no, actually, sorry, there's um, there's high times and low times in all of those different things. Sometimes I have, you know, events, and it's really busy with events, but I've, like, shed all with teaching. Sometimes I've got a lot of teaching, and, you know, and I've got no commissions or no inspiration to do my own work. And all these things tend to peak and low at different times, and I roll with it. Or if nothing's happening, I push one. You know, you have to learn to... Um, when to push and kind of when to just go with the flow of things but to just be focusing on one thing that works for some people it really does but I do find as an artist I mean creative having all these things to stimulate me is um, really effective I also think I think you're totally right and I think that that's partly your entrepreneurial spirit as well you are very much um, you're an artist but you are a businesswoman as well and I think you know that and it's safer for you in business to have a lot of different avenues, a lot of different revenue streams. It's way safer and more secure than just focusing on one that in this day and age, if technology changes, could ruin that entire, you know, arm. It's always good to yeah. have multiple arms of revenue streams and always be looking for more. Well, I think you just said it. As the industry is changing, um, to because no one knows what's going to happen in one year and five years and ten years, we don't know where it's going necessarily. To be creating multiple things is is a very safe way to go about it all. You know, just focusing on one isn't. Um, I mean, it, it might have worked twenty years ago. 
right when Andy Warhol, like, you know, there was, there was a, there was a time when you could have your 15 minutes of fame, but these days, actually every day can be your 15 minutes of fame if you really want it to be, but spreading it out is safe for sure at this time and, and putting, you know, your ideas out there in many different avenues is I think really smart and wise. Yeah, I agree with um, you. Because you ha we, we're going to have to adapt at some point to where you know where it settles off like mm -hmm. where it levels and plateaus yeah if it does it might just keep getting crazier and crazier we <laughs> don't know it's true <laughs> but we have to um throw it i think we need to just throw it all out there and see what happens mm -hmm. and don't hold back i agree at all I agree. we need to freak out this is the time to lose it <laughs> <If I mean. laughs> well nothing's been set well Right? Like the internet is wide open for anyone to come on and with their own their own voice and their own particular way of sharing their art or sharing their value. Um, it's it's all wide open right now. There's no That's kind of inspiring. It is. I mean like it is and the, the most amazing thing to me is given enough time and enough commitment and enough yeah. clarity to your core value you have the entire world to respond to that call you know like voices carry oh, that's exciting yeah. yeah voices carry and it's just be consistent with your message you know be consistent with your value always be giving away yes you know giving away value and um you have the whole world there as a as a possible audience it's just it's phenomenal the opportunities make me like squee a little bit yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> definitely um that's another thing that keeps I, artists going all the time right is that everything is possible and so there's you know there's no reason to go back on that belief it's now more true than ever if anything it's true you know we do have the way we connect with people the you know and, and how instant it can be like you and I you know we haven't seen each other in years and yet here we are and we're still in different cities but you know this is possible mm -hmm. just those simple things but then to can you how can you um, adapt that and change that like actually before um, this training session that I'm doing with TriArt right now, um, these cats came from Holland, right? And when we were trying to organize it all and the logistics of it, there was a point where I was like, you know what? If they can't come act physically, then we'll do the training session over Skype. Right. And and like my boss and uh, actually the the owner of Van Beck, they're older and you know they're not really into Facebook and social media or anything. I don't understand it. They just you know, like my boss is like, oh, as long as you're doing it, and I know it's important, so good. <laughs> but he doesn't know, he doesn't actually realize the impact um, that it has, or he doesn't even go and look. Or sometimes he'll go, oh, I looked on Facebook, I don't have an account, but I looked, and it looks good, and, but it's really, he doesn't, <laughs> you know, he doesn't understand. Um, but at that point when I said, hey, we could do it over Skype, it, there was this initial, oh, well, no, but you know, we want them to do this traditionally. Right. We want them to physically come. But then, you know, more talks and, and, you know, scheduling became an issue. And it was like, okay, well, you know what, if we really, if it really doesn't work out, we'll do the Skype thing. And they had accepted it. In the end, we worked it out and they're, they're here. But it was so great to see that change in, in acceptance of this technology. In, in such a, you know, an application, it was just, it wasn't even, uh, it wouldn't even occur to them. Right. So the younger generation has a huge advantage in the way that they can, you know, cross link things and come up with, you know, a totally different way of doing something. Yeah. But if you don't say it, you don't put it out there, even if your boss says you're crazy, you know, you have to put it out there. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. You have I totally to. Agree. Um, Shar, <laughs> we're coming up. It's been over an hour already. It's been like an hour and 15 okay. minutes. Um, so 
I'd like to um, to close this um, off now. I want you to stay on though. Don't don't click off because I want to talk to you a little bit after we're we're done. But um, thank sure. you so much for um, for being on the interview with us. Um, I'd love to to touch base with you again, especially um, after the book becomes a manifestation. I'd love to sit down and talk to you about that whole process and how sure. how that came through because that's that's really exciting as well. So. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> yeah. And everyone, thanks for listening. Thank I will, I'll talk to you guys next week.